All right, the uh, Big March for Life event got underway in the nation's capital today. Wonderful supporting messages to the marchers from President Trump and Vice President Pence. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how much coverage this gets on the network news tonight. The March for Life event here in Utah will be taking place next Saturday. And if my health improves, hopefully I'll be uh, there to uh, MC it next Saturday. We'll just have to see how it goes. Speaking of that, a Utah lawmaker is now proposing uh, outlying abortions after 15 weeks. This is matching the uh, Mississippi law, which was signed into uh, law uh, earlier this year, late last year, I believe. Joining us on our newsmaker line is the lawmaker who wants to do that. It is State Representative Cheryl Acton, and she's on our newsmaker line right now. Cheryl, how are you? Welcome to the show. Hi, great. Thanks, Rob. Cheryl, Cheryl tell us about this bill that you're going to be introducing. Okay, it's HB 136. Um, currently, it's a very simple bill in that it only changes one aspect of abortion law in Utah, and that is um, the time frame, the window in which a woman can choose to abort. They can still abort um, electively throughout the first trimester, but as she progresses into the second trimester of the pregnancy, um, that would be limited. They, they would only be with exceptions like rape, incest, life with a mother, and, and a fatal fetal defect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why move the uh, time frame up another five weeks here? Why is that so important? Well, that's an excellent question, and there are lots of excellent reasons to move it up. Um, primarily because there are risks increased for the a woman throughout the pregnancy as it progresses, they become exponentially, um, it's exponentially more risky after eight weeks. Um, so that's a major reason, both physically, psychologically, and emotionally. There are risks for women in second trimester abortion. Also, um, of course, uh, the baby, mm -hmm. um, the method that they use for abortion in the second trimester is extremely objectionable. It, 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 it's absolutely, um, to me, it shocks the conscience. And so it's also, the we now know so much more than we did in 1973, we now understand that the fetuses do feel pain. Um, there's, an actual, there's a researcher at the U who's an expert in fetal pain perception. And everyone actually understands that they do feel pain. The debate now is whether or not uh, that pain is meaningful, I'm using quotation marks there, or um, if they can ex experience suffering. So um, those are things we can debate, but they do feel pain. So that's another thing, that yeah. they, and that progresses, their perception progresses throughout the pregnancy also. So the earlier the abortion can take place, um, the better in that regard yeah. as well. Cheryl, um, there's no doubt um, any attempt to restrict abortion, not only here in Utah, but around the country, is always going to face a court challenge of some sort. And I, I wish that wouldn't happen, but it's likely to happen here. Do you think the state is ready for that? Yes. In fact, today I met with two attorneys who would be handling it for the state of Utah, and um, they let me know what we're up against. Um, if it should pass the House and the Senate and be signed into law. And it is daunting, but it is a fight that is worth um, making. There are so many things that have changed since 1973, and I personally believe that each state should be able to determine how it feels about abortion and, and the laws within that state. Cheryl, as I mentioned, the uh, March for Life event was held in the nation's capital today. We've got a president and a vice president who are very supportive of the pro-life movement. Um, your assessment of as to the direction of the pro-life movement, when are we going to get a real definitive ruling on this, which really does restrict abortions? I mean, you hear about it in several states, but are we ever going to get a national review, do you think, of Roe v. Wade, which I agree should be taking place. Even Bader, Ruth Bader Ginsburg has said that it it, 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 went, it went a little too far. What is your assessment as to where we are right now in this fight? Well, I would agree, absolutely. I mean, every time a state tries to do anything to limit abortion within the state, it, it's bounced back. They, the, the Supreme Court will not hear it. And, and so many things have changed, as I said, and so I think it needs to be revisited. Um, it shouldn't be an automatic, oh, absolutely not, you know, the, you know, it's all already uh -huh. settled law. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah. Cheryl, good luck with this. Uh, big supporter of this effort. I'm a big pro-lifer and uh, always involved with people who are in, in an effort to do whatever we can to restrict abortion. And hopefully this bill will be able to make it through the Utah legislature. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rod, and thank you for your help in all of those efforts. So thank you very much. All right. Cheryl, thank you. Enjoy the weekend. Joining us on our Newsmaker Line, State Representative Cheryl Acton. She is going to be introducing legislation which would outlaw abortions here in the state of Utah after 15 weeks. Right now it's currently 20 weeks. This would shrink that time window just a little bit.